So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Judy. Thanks, Bob. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our program. I try to do a basic talk and have things that would be interesting to people who don't know much about succulents and maybe a few things that are interesting to people who know more about succulents. Um, as we said, as Bob said, Liz will be answering questions in the chat. And um, at the end, I'll answer some questions too. So starting out, let's just get going. This is about growing succulents and succulents will survive neglect, but they don't thrive on neglect. But one of the reasons that people grow succulents is unlike a lot of your soft plants that you forget to water them once and you're dead, uh, not you, but the plant. Um, succulents are, the important things in growing succulents are to pay attention to the soil. And the reason that you pay attention to the soil is they need drainage. You also need to pay attention to how much you're watering them and when their dormancy period is, which we'll talk about, uh, what their sun exposure is, their heat and cold tolerance, and maintenance and propagation. And we're going to try to respond to some of the challenges that you find in this program tonight. So what is a succulent? Keep those a aside. Keep those aside. I'm getting reverb from somebody's got their, doesn't have their microphone off. So a succulent is defined as any plant that stores water in its leaves or stems. Um, so you see the sedum and their little uh, juicy little plants and there's a beautiful agave Victoria Regina which stores a lot of water in its leaves and an Echeveria agoides lip lipstick, which also stores water in its leaves. So these are also succulents, these beautiful uh, torch aloes and all of these different agaves that are here. These are actually little aloes in the front, but all of these are succulents. And how about begonias? This is a question that I got asked by someone else in a seminar once and I got wrong. And the answer is yes, begonias are succulents. They store water in their stems. So they're another type of succulent. So a cactus is also a succulent and all cactus are succulent, but all succulents aren't cactus. And cactus are usually storing water in their stem and then they have these little very fine needles um, that are their leaves and they make the most beautiful flowers. So we put up with cactus, even though they're mean sometimes because they make flowers. And these are one, and there's one back here that's about to burst into yellow flowers. So succulents are really amazing plants. They're very, very easy to grow usually. They're very forgiving, as I said, if they don't get watered properly, if the soil isn't exactly right. Um, they still will grow and they have a lot of other uses like this aloe vera, which is wonderful for burns and people use it for cooking and all different, different things. So succulents can also grow in little spots. This is just happens to be a pumpkin. And when we do our decorative pumpkins, we don't hollow out the pumpkin like some people will tell you to do. These succulents are just glued onto the moss that's on top of this pumpkin. And I have had them last for six months just on the pumpkin and then you pull them off and you can plant them. Uh, I'll try to tell you what the plants are as we go along. So this is another Echeveria gavoides. Um, these are sedum nuspomeranium, and these are little sedums, jelly bean sedums, rubertinctums. So a question I get asked a lot about succulents is how much water do they actually need? And that's going to depend on the succulent that you have. These are agave perii, and at this size, I probably would just let them uh, survive on whatever rainwater would be. This happens to be in San Diego, but they don't need a lot of water. 
And in the summer, we need to water our succulents more. In, it depends also whether they're in the ground or in a container. So in containers, obviously they dry out faster and you need to water more often. Uh, we water our four inch pots at the succulent house uh, twice a week in summer and about once a week in winter. But if your succulents are in the ground, you can water them much less frequently. And obviously if it's hot and sunny, they need more water. If it's windy, they need more water. And the finer the leaves and stems, the less water it can retain. So this little sedum can't hold as much water as the graptopetalum. Or like you see giant cacti in the desert and they don't ever get any water except when it rains in the winter and they do just fine. So this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Everybody was born with a magic tool and that's your finger. And if you wanna know if your succulent needs a drink, the very best thing you can do is put your finger into the soil. And you can see I put my finger into this. Um, this is a Euphorbia anoplia, which by the way is not a cactus, even though it looks like a cactus. And you can see that there's a little dirt on my finger that's moist. So this plant does not want a drink. Most succulents like to dry out in between watering. Uh, if you water them too much, they'll rot. And if you don't like to get your fingers dirty, you can use this very expensive tool that you get free at some restaurants, also known as a chopstick. And again, I just stuck this chopstick into the plant and damp soil stuck to the chopstick. So it does not need a drink yet. This is what can happen if you overwater your succulents. Uh, they, they rot and they really are miserable. I mean, this plant is going to die uh, because its roots rotted out. So another question is fertilizing. And frankly, I don't fertilize my succulents. We do not fertilize our succulents in the hoop house at Marshall Cottle. I don't know anyone who raises succulents who fertilizes them, but if you have to do it, if you're just one of these people who has to fertilize your succulents, then fertilize them lightly with a very, like half the regular dose and make sure that it's during their growing season, not when they're dormant. We'll talk about that in a minute. An important thing to know too is whether your plant grows in the summer or winter. And it's something that we don't think a lot about with most plants is when does that plant like to grow? Um, when it's growing, it needs more water, it needs more nutrients. When it's not growing, it doesn't want to get watered. Um, so one of the handouts that I've given you is this big list of summer and winter uh, plants. And another reason that it's really important to know that is that, for instance, if I decided that I was going to, let's say I wanted to propagate my kalanchoe in the summertime and I cut it up and I plant it and it doesn't do anything because it's dormant. So you want to propagate your plants when they're in their growing season. Um, it drives me crazy that the biggest questions I get asked all the time are what the names of the plants are. What is this plant called? And I just wanna say that's John, that's Henry. Um, it, it doesn't really matter what the plant is, except that you do need to know it for the care of the plant. Um, so if you know it's an agave, the agaves grow in the summertime. And if you, they actually, they propagate differently. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you do have this list in your handouts. So um, I recommend printing it out and keeping it as you grow your succulents. It's a handy, handy thing to know. So along those lines, 
I wish I could hear you all. It's, it's kind of strange giving a webinar and not being able to see what your reactions are, uh, what I'm saying, but um, what's wrong with this plant? And I actually asked a friend earlier, what's wrong with this plant? And she thought about it for a while. And the answer is there's nothing wrong with this plant. This is an aeonium and it is in its dormant period and it's sleeping. It's not growing right now. And so when you have aeoniums, and a lot of us do because they're a wonderful plant around here, you don't want to water them, at least not very much, when they're dormant. They don't need a lot of water. And something that happens is people see their plant looking like this and go, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with it. And they water it and then it rots. Um, this is a common thing that happens with succulents. We're used to, when we see a plant not looking happy, thinking that, oh, it needs water. And that's usually the last thing a succulent needs. And that's why you need to use your magic tool and check. And if the soil is damp, it definitely does not need water. So you can see, this is the same thing. This is the aeonium when it's, happy and growing. And on the other side is the aeonium when it's dormant. Um, they grow in the winter. Your aeoniums should be beautiful right now. This is their time to shine. And in the summertime, they close up and go to sleep. So another question that we get asked a lot is, do succulents all like full sun? And that's an assumption that people make that, oh, it's a succulent, it can be out in the sun. And that's really not the case. In fact, my advice is that all succulents will grow in some shade, in shade. If they have reflected light, if they have some light, um, they'll grow. They will not all grow in full sun. A lot of them will get sunburned. Um, Cacti, almost all cacti can grow in the sun and they like full sun and they bloom in full sun. The other succulent that's on the other side, the pink flower is an epiphyllum. And I've always heard that epiphyllums could be in full sun, but my personal experience with them is that when I put them in full sun, they get sunburned. So another thing that you can do with, with your succulents and other plants as well, is you slowly move them into the sun. You don't suddenly, especially like if you buy a plant from a nursery or from a succulent house where they've been in the shade and you bring it home and you put it in the full sun and it dies or it gets horribly sunburned or it's just miserable. And that's because it's not used to that. So you can start them and slowly give them more sun little by little. Um, I don't grow many succulents indoors. There are some, I'll get to one in a little bit, that do grow indoors and do well. But most succulents are happiest outside. Um, you can always give them morning sun. Everybody likes morning sun. But if you're putting something in the full heat of the afternoon, you want to make sure that it can deal with it like this uh, cactus can. And succulents change in the sun. This is an aloe saponaria, and the green one is in the shade, and this beautiful red one is in the sun. And that's how they deal with stress. And some of our succulents actually look a lot nicer when they're in stressed conditions. Um, a lot of you probably have jade plants, Crassula ovatas, and if you keep them in the shade, they have big green leaves. If you have one that's been living in the full sun for a while, they usually have smaller red leaves. And uh, my mother used to always say, I want you to bring me one of those jade plants with the red leaves. And I'd say to her mom, it's, it's the same plant. It just depends what conditions you grow it in. So here's another real example. This is Sedum nospomeranium. And I probably mispronounced that. Don't call me on it. Uh, 
Anyway, in the sun, it takes on these beautiful reds and oranges and is just a really beautiful plant. And in the shade, it's a kind of boring green plant. So some of these plants really like to be in the sun and are much more beautiful in the sun. This is the Crassula capitella campfire, and you can see that in the sun where it got its name. But if you're growing this in the shade or we're trying to grow it inside your house, it would just be a boring green plant. Not that green plants are bad, but I kind of like the fancy red. This is a Calanco, Calancoe lucia in full sun. This is one of my plants that I really like. And you can see how red and bright it is. It's very nice. And this is Sedum angelina, again, sun and shade. Okay, I want to tell you the story of the ham. I sure wish I could see you all. So the story of the ham is this couple gets married and the wife makes a ham and the husband's washing her and she cuts the end off the ham before she puts it into the pan. And the husband said, why are you cutting the end off the ham? And she said, well, my mother always did it that way. So that weekend they're having dinner with the mother and the husband says to the mother, why do you cut the end of your ham off? And the mother says, well, my mother always did it that way. So that Christmas, they see the grandmother for dinner and the son asks the grandmother, your, your granddaughter and your daughter both cut the end off their ham and they said that you did it and I was wondering why you did it. And she got a very kind of tight look on her face and said, my pan is too small. So when you start doing things, this, the moral of this story is that everybody's always told me to do it that way, or that's the way I've always done it. Look into the why. The why are we telling you to do that? Succulents need soil drainage. This is one of the most important things I'm gonna tell you tonight is that your succulents need to drain well. We use a product called Stall Dry or Dry Stall that is a pumice and we like it because it works well. Um, it doesn't float like some people use, um, the word just went out of my head, perlite. And a lot of nurseries use perlite. I guess it's less expensive, but it just kind of, tends to migrate to the top. And other people use uh, the red volcanic rock, which is also good. We use about three quarter part soil to one quarter pumice, more or less. And if you're growing cactus, you put in more. Um, you wanna be sure that your succulents roots are able to drain and aren't sitting in water. Another question is the size and type of container. You get asked this a lot. And something that I guess asked a lot about that had actually never occurred to me is if you have succulents generally don't have really deep roots and you have this big pot and can you fill the bottom with something else? And people do things like put in plastic belt cartons and things in the bottom. Um, something not to do with your succulents is to pile a bunch of rocks or sand in the bottom of the pot. My personal preference is to just use soil. Um, I, I don't understand what the problem with that is, but some people like to do it differently. Some people's grandmothers cut the ends of their hams off and they think that's a good way to do it. But I will tell you, do not put rocks in the bottom. It, it just makes a big mess. Um, whether you like glazed terra pots or terracotta pots or plastic pots, um, we start all of our plants in four inch plastic pots. The thing you need to be careful with with plastic is that it doesn't breathe. So they hold more water, they keep the moisture in. Um, glazed pots keep in more moisture than terracotta pots. Whatever you use will work. They all work. Again, the most important thing is to keep in mind your magic tool and to check whether your plant is moist. If it's still wet, don't water it. 
Um, in the summertime, I used to live in the San Joaquin Valley and it got really, 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 really hot. And my plants in terracotta pots needed to be watered more often because they dry out more quickly. So it's just something good to keep in mind. Um, I like glazed pots because they're pretty. Also, um, you don't want to put a little tiny plant in a great big pot, especially with succulents. A lot of succulents like to be close together. And if you're up potting, only put your plant in a pot one size bigger than what it's in. So its roots grow nicely out. Um, if you put them in too big a pot, they don't tend to be as happy. I don't know why, I guess they like to be cuddled. Another thing is if you have a giant pot and you put it down on your patio, like the picture, this top picture, um, it may not drain. You want to use feet. Um, let me digress for a minute and say you can see this is a picture by Laura Ballaro. Laura was my mentor. Um, she is the most knowledgeable succulent person I know and also a lovely person. And some of the photos that I have here are photos that she took and I'm grateful for her allowing us to use them. So pots need holes. And if your pot does not have a drainage hole, you can drill one. Um, you can get a set of these bits for, I don't know, 12 to $18 for the whole set. Um, this is a hole that I drilled in a pot. It's not perfect. It works better if you keep it wet when you're going to drill your hole. It, it just works better. Um, and those Orchid pots that everybody has that are uh, they're some kind of ceramic, they're very hard to drill, but I have drilled them. So, um, but it is not okay to not have a hole in your pot. Uh, people say, well, I'll just put rocks in the bottom and the water will drain into the rocks and no. Please, if you want happy succulents and we all want happy succulents, give them a pot with a hole and make sure that the water can drain out and away. So this is one of the inside plants. And this was interesting because one of my friends in North Carolina sent, actually posted these pictures on Facebook last week. This is Sensevieria, also known as a snake plant, also known as a mother-in-law's tongue. This one is blooming, which is really nice. And this is a succulent that is very, very happy living inside your house. And they're just great plants. They, they're easy to grow. They're one of the easiest. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful plant. And there are many, many different varieties of this plant. And ironically, last week, Laura also posted this picture of a Sansevieria on Facebook. And it's interesting because I used to be a person who thought you should always start succulents in soil. This is a belief I had. And these are sensibaria leaves that were started in water. And you can see the little rootlets at the bottom. These are ready to plant. Um, you can see that she had these in water for a couple of months before they rooted. Uh, a lot of succulents take a while to root. So whether you're rooting it in water or in soil, uh, be patient. If you've got a lot of succulents, maybe you have jade plants and you'll find out on the patio leaves that have fallen off the jade plant and they're making babies and they had no help. They had no water, they had no soil, they had nothing. They just started growing. And if we have a little time, I have some starts to show you at the end of my presentation here. So this is a little video, hopefully this will work. And uh, And as you can see, it's 
doing is going to very ruthlessly clean it apart. It's supposed to have it planted in some very sandy soil that does not get the So, if you just going to pull these apart, there's one thing. And then, if you to recut it, you're going to trim out the division So, there's and we have our little soy pot here, and we can uh, cut a soil with about 15% oh, of dry soil, which is an expanded pumice that we mix in so that it's nice and smooth. So the video uh, isn't very good quality. Can you see it but not hear it? Put it in here? It, yes, I can see it, but it's can distorted you, uh, sound. Okay, well, it's it's just another moment, so I'm going to let it run. Okay. You want to catch the thing that it's going to have because once you water it, it's going to sink down in. So you can see how that's going to sink up. It's going to go down like that. So there we go. There's one. Pretty little gas area, and hopefully it will. Okay, so I'm holding up, I hope, to my camera so you can see there's this little, I found Judy? this, yeah. Stop sharing your screen and then you're, you will become enlarged and we can see better. Okay. Then you'll have hang to come back to minute. share after. Whoops, hang on just a minute. Now I need to uh, go back, go back. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Okay. There. Now, now we should be able to see it better. Okay. Well, it's tiny, but this is a little aeonium leaf that you can see. There's what's left of the leaf at the end. And here's the little plant and the little roots. And I just found this in a succulent here at my son's house when I was getting ready for uh, this meeting today. And I just wanted to show how, you know, this didn't get any special care or anything, nothing. And it's got all these little roots and it's ready to plant. Um, I'm sorry about the, the audio on that video. I hope you got something out of it, but I was just showing how you can uh, separate out that gasteria. Now it'll make a bunch of lovely plants. So um, let's see if I can start sharing my screen again, which now it's, there we go. Why is it doing this? Not this, this. Okay. Okay. So I think I'm back. Am I back? Uh, yes, you're back. Okay. So why use succulents in your landscape? And especially why now? So this really surprised me. I had a very old map like this in, in this presentation, and I went looking for one that was newer. And this is precipitation to totals for last February, and it was the driest February on record. And obviously, we haven't had any rain to speak of this year either. So one of the reasons that succulents are such a great choice is because they save water. And look how beautiful this is. I, I mean, I just think this yard is stunning. I would be proud to have it. Um, and it's all very, very low water use succulents. And this is the succulent demonstration garden that we have just started at Marshall Cottle Park. And hopefully soon um, you will all be able to come in and visit us and see our succulent garden. This was soon after we planted it. And this is six months after we planted it. So how you add succulents to your garden. You want to choose plants that you can group together and that complement each other. Um, I'm going to go into more of these things as the presentation goes on. But the most important thing is well-drained soil and ample sunlight. 
And one of the best ways to get drainage is to build up hills and berms. And also they look, the plants look very nice on that. So you start by drawing out your plan, measure your area, notice where the sun's gonna be and locate your water source. And then you add hardscape. And I, I just had to share this, this picture because I think this is one of the most beautiful paths I've ever seen. And I someday may have the time and energy to do something like that, but not so far. Anyway, I think that's beautiful. If any of you are really ambitious, you can try to make a path like that. But here is uh, our demonstration garden at Marshall Cottle. And you can see we put in our path and this edging, which is actually um, those retaining wall rocks we put on side on their sides. And this is our fountain back here that is a succulent fountain. And you can see right here is a tree. And this tree is not a succulent, but it is one of my favorite trees. And I'm surprised it's not used more in our area. Um, it is called a desert. Museum, oh my gosh, the name, just Palo Verde. It's a Palo Verde tree and the cultivar is Desert Museum. The reason you want the Desert Museum cultivar is because unlike other Palo Verdes, it doesn't have thorns. Um, and Palo Verde means green stick and they have very green trunks and they have these beautiful lacy leaves. I think you'll see in another picture and they bloom with these lovely yellow flowers frequently. And this picture was taken, um, well, last summer. And that tree is now huge. It's really beautiful. So you prepare your site. You need well-drained sandy soil. But again, here's, here's that ham. Remember the ham that you cut the end off? Um, when we started our soil, our garden, we did not have much money. And so we just got soil and uh, didn't amend it, but piled it up high. And so far, things are working. Um, raised beds really work well, and hills and mounds work well. So there's somebody showing us some lovely, lovely soil. So you need water. Um, drip irrigation is great when you start succulents. Um, this agave americana was where I used to live and it got huge. And I watered it the first year or two that I planted it and then I never watered it again and it got enormous. I actually have a picture somewhere of one of these uh, agave americanas with Laura and me standing underneath it and it's towering over our heads. Not that we're particularly tall, but the plant was probably eight or 10 feet tall. So um, choosing plants is the most fun. If you're big succulent aficionados, you might recognize this as the succulent growing grounds in Castroville. It's a wonderful, fun place to go. For me, it's like going to the candy store. So the things you need to consider when you're going to make either a garden or even a, a succulent arrangement in a pot is, are these group of things. So one, one thing you wanna think about is size. Um, how big is it going to get? And I always remember that an anecdote from uh, my master gardener class where the person who was teaching the class said, if you want a little tiny dog, you do not buy a Great Dane and trim it. So I hope somebody's chuckling out there. I can't hear any of you, but um, you want to find out how big, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. Um, you, you want to make sure you know how big the plant is going to get before you put it in your garden or in a pot, like the giant Americana agave, um, it'll take over most people's gardens. Um, this is one of my plants, it's a Bocarnia recurvata. A uh, ponytail palm is how you know it. And it starts out small and it grows very slowly. This plant is probably 40 years old. But if you've seen these in Southern California, they get enormous. So it's okay to put this in a, an arrangement 
or in a garden because it's going to take so long to get big. You can see mine is in a half barrel and <clears throat> excuse me, it's about, I don't know, eight feet tall. It's a nice plant. So you also want to consider the shape of the plant, what its growing habit is, whether it's something that spreads out or fans out. I like this Winnie the Pooh was done. Those are all little tiny echeverias. Um, and that was done by Robin, who used to be the owner at the Succulent Growing Gardens. And these are one of my favorite plants. They grow really well around here, either in pots or in the ground. It's an agave attenuata. And it um, is tender to frost, but it's they're really lovely. And also what their what their growing nature is. Everybody knows string of pearls. And this one is string of watermelons. And these plants grow down. They don't grow up. No matter what you do, they're going to grow down. So just like you don't get the Great Dane and cut it down, you don't buy a poodle with curly long hair and hope that it's going to be short haired. You just you need to know what your plants are going to do. And then we get into color. Um, before I started loving succulents, I thought they were really boring plants because I liked flowers. And I didn't realize how much color and variety there was in these beautiful, beautiful plants. Um, these Sedum rubra tinctum and Sedevaria laetitia. This is what happens when they're really out in the sun and they get beautiful, beautiful color. These are both outside. This is a cotyledon orbiculata, one of my favorite plants. And it's really sad because it's called a pig's ear. And I don't know, I would never call it that. Um, I like that it's white and um, planting against a white plant really gives you nice contrast. Then you want to think about the texture of your plants. So it's boring if everything's the same. You want to mix up the colors, mix up the textures. And one of the things in making uh, arrangements, they use a little uh, saying that is you want thrills, fills, and spills. So you, you choose something that's going to be your thrill and then other things to fill in and then things that spill. This probably isn't a really good example of that, but that's a good way to think when you're doing um, like a garden in a pot, an arrangement. This wonderful plant, this Stapalia, and this is my plant and it's blooming and I love the texture and I love the color, certainly not boring. And I've had this plant for quite some time and it finally bloomed this year. Um, this is also called a starfish plant and it is one of the plants that Supposedly, the flowers smell like rotting flesh, but I, I didn't really notice that myself. So these are just some more spilling things you want to think about, whether it's trailing, mounding, upright, prostrate, clumping, climbing, things to think about when you're buying plants. This is the tunnel house at our demonstration garden, and it's also a wonderful wonderful place for you to buy plants. And hopefully when COVID passes, we used to have uh, sales on the third Saturday of every month. And we're hoping that we'll be able to do that again. So when you put it all together, you get these lovely mixes of color and shape and texture. This is at the San Diego Zoo. And um, I think I had that picture in too. This is somebody's frontage in Los Angeles that I just grabbed a picture. So easy plants for our zone are any agaves, aloes, cotyledons, euphorbia, the little mammillaria cactus, opuntias. This is an opuntia over here, also known as a prickly pear. Sedums of all types, graptopetalums, ice plants, many, many, many plants do really well here in the ground. And um, this is a really nice opuntia in that it's an opuntia that doesn't have needles 
or uh, glochids. It doesn't have spines. So another thing to think about is that succulents and cacti look really lovely with California wildflowers. Um, mine were kind of dying down when I took this, but you can see there are some poppies over here. And they grow really well together because the wildflowers grow from the moisture that winter has brought, and so do the succulents. And then um, most of your wildflower flowers will die back in summer, and that's fine. You stop watering, and everybody does fine. This is a nice agave perii in front here. Uh, I also had in this bed uh, thousands and thousands of daffodils. So in the winter, the daffodils would bloom around the succulents, and then the wildflowers came up. So this is a jade plant, your common Crassula ovata. And of course, they do great in our area. You want to protect it from frost. If it gets frost damage, though, you just leave it alone. And that's what this picture is. I hope you can see it. But this plant got terribly damaged by frost, and it prunes itself. It will turn black and it will drop the parts that are frozen or have been frozen. And then later it will grow back. And this big plant here actually had been frosted and grown back. So um, I would say that about all your succulents. If they get damaged by frost, leave them alone. Don't go and start pruning off the part that got frosted. Um, you can leave them alone. Um, Something you can see here that I used to use were the old fashioned Christmas lights. The LED lights that you have now don't help, but I used to keep Christmas lights around my succulents and it would keep them from freezing. So these are naturalized agaves, Americana and Variegata. If you have a big area, they're just amazing plants. If you know it's going to frost, which is 32 degrees. You want to use heavy frost cloth to protect your plants. Um, this is one of Laura's pictures. And it's a lot better if you protect them. We had quite a disaster at Marshall Cottle in our demonstration garden. Um, the first frost this year caught us totally unaware. And at my house, I live up in the hills and it didn't frost at all. But when I went down to the park, which is lower, uh, we'd had a terrible freeze and a lot of our plants were really damaged. And if you were to go out and look at the garden now, you would see a lot of plants like our Crassula mucosa, which are also known as watch chains. And they just look like they're dead. But if you look down toward the base of the plant, you can see that there's uh, new green growth coming. So you just leave them alone. Protect your plants from frost if you possibly can, but if you blow it and they get frosted, don't freak out, don't pull them all out, don't, don't cut them. Just um, let, them, let them fix themselves. Another beautiful thing about succulents. So a note about pest control. I put this picture in because you need a cute picture, a cute animal picture. And I think this is a cute animal. Um, so my most hated pest is uh, mealybugs. And that's what's on this plant here. And what I generally used to tell people, and I still frankly believe this, if you get mealybugs in your plants, um, and you will know it because there's this white kind of, um, furriness that is along the stems. And um, you might see the little critters if you use a loop or a magnifier. And they look almost like, um, like a roly-poly, but a little tiny, tiny roly-poly. And they're almost impossible to eradicate. So I suggest that you put it in a plastic bag and put it in the garbage. If it's a plant that you just love so much and you don't want to sacrifice it, what you need to do is most of the mealybugs live in the soil. Um, there are mealybugs that live in the soil and mealybugs that live above the soil, but regardless, you want to take every single bit of soil off that plant, um, throw it away in a plastic bag, wash 
the plant really well, wash the roots, wash the plant, then spray it all with alcohol and um, make sure you get into every nook and cranny and crevice and let it dry out. And then what I do is a couple days later, I wash it and spray it again. Um, and then you can put it into new potting soil and watch it. Uh, you really do not want to have this plant around any of your other plants because uh, mealybugs can spread through all of your plants. And in our growing conditions, in, in being in a greenhouse more or less, it's a hoop house, uh, we have had this get whole bunches of plants and I subscribe strongly to the plastic bag method. Uh, also this year we had something I've never had before, we saw these plants that were just losing their leaves. And it was this little teeny tiny caterpillar. And we ended up picking those off and um, spraying them with neem oil. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute again, because I want to show you a couple of plants. So just give me one second to grab a plant. So <clears throat> this edge of area was a plant that I really didn't want to lose. And it had been, uh, you can see. Judy, yeah? Um, because of your um, virtual background, um, if you move the plant I'm away. going to, uh, I'm going to take my virtual background off for a minute then. I, I think showing the plant will work better without, yeah. OK, thank you. OK. So there it is. And you can see that this plant is now coming back. Um, this one, I believe, was one that got attacked by, oh, another of my least favorite critters, uh, aphids. It had aphids, and it had uh, those caterpillars. And so anyway, the center got chopped off. And you can see the leaves out here look pretty funky, but it's coming back. And if I could show it to you in a year or two, it would look lovely. So um, if you have patience and you're willing to uh, treat your plant, then you might be able to save some. If you have things, um, this was a, a Echeveria ruffles and I really like those plants. So also some succulents like to be crowded in their pots. This is a Haworthia cooperi, which was a plant that I always thought was a hard plant to grow. Um, I would go to the nursery and I would get one little Haworthia cooperi and I would bring it home and it just wouldn't thrive. I don't know why. Um, and then I was visiting a friend one day and I saw a giant pot full of Haworthia. And I said, what do you do? And she said, nothing. So I tried again. And that's another thing. Be, be patient with yourself. If you don't have luck with a plant, try again. Um, and now you can see that this is a very happy plant. And I can actually separate it out and take some of the babies and move them around. But I like the way it looks crowded like that. It looks really nice. Um, in color, shape, and texture, I thought this was a pot that you might like. And these are some really nice plants. Um, this is agave desm desmetiana, which is a really beautiful agave. If you come visit us at Marshall Cottle, um, we have several of them and they're very nice. And then there's this little agave kishwakan, which is also known as a butterfly agave. And one of the nice things about it is that it's one of the only agaves that stays very small. Um, and then I have the purple opuntia that grows all over in Arizona. I apologize, I don't remember its proper name and another opuntia, I like opuntia. Um, but you can see this made a very nice arrangement together, uh, having those plants. 
And then there are plants that stay really tiny. This is an Opuntia cinnamon, another Opuntia I know. But this, is, this picture is actually bigger than life. Uh, this plant is about two inches tall and I'm absolutely in love with it. I love the color of it and it's just, um, it's a really nice little plant. So our Facebook page is MG Sassy Succulents and please look for us on Facebook I don't post as much as I would like, but I love answering your questions. You can also email me questions at uh, judykhecht at gmail.com. And I will do my best to answer you. Sometimes people send me tons of uh, pictures of things that they want ID'd. Um, this beautiful plant is a Crassula falcata, also known as a propeller plant. And this is its beautiful bloom. Uh, so this is not the end of our program. It's just the end of the PowerPoint. But succulents are fun. They're addictive. I warn you that if you start having succulents, you'll want more and more and more and more. They come in lots of colors, shapes, sizes, textures. They're easy to grow. Um, they're easy to care for. They're beautiful. And most of all, they are water wise. Um, this is a list of some places that you want to visit. Uh, I really recommend if you get a chance ever to go to Huntington Botanical Garden. They have a beautiful, mature uh, succulent and cactus garden. Um, so does the San Francisco Botanical Garden. There's also a lovely one at Stanford. Um, there are many, many books. Any book by Deborah Lee Baldwin. Um, any book by Rudolf Schultz and Attila Capitani are wonderful. You can search on the internet. There are lots and lots of succulent groups on Facebook. Uh, there are succulent fanatics. There's also a Bay Area succulent group that I've gotten involved with lately that's just terrific. And of course, MG Sassy Succulents. Um, we'd love to have you there. And then you'll see when our sales are coming and also you can ask questions and I will do my best to answer them. Um, these were some of my references. I'm going to speed past this. All the pictures in this were either taken by Laura or by me. And um, our Santa Clara County Master Gardener site is MG Santa Clara. Um, you can just search on Santa Clara County Master Gardeners. That's the easiest thing to do. And we have sales and we have presentations and also other library talks will be posted there. Um, there's a whole, there are whole groups, like we have a group that's planted agave. It's just on agaves. There are people who do just about everything. I'm sure many of you know these sites. So I'm going to turn off this. Let me stop sharing my screen. And I'm, you're gonna to have to excuse me, I'm gonna grab some plants for you. So, this is tough to do on Zoom, but I like to talk about propagation a little bit and I'm gonna jump around a little bit. These are plants that I brought for you for different reasons. Um, I just, brought this is, um, this is a beautiful graptobetalum and it's called a superbum. It's actually superbum, but we like to call it a superbum. But the reason I brought this, I hope you can see this, is so that you can see it's making babies. See, uh, in between the leaves. And I won't cut those off yet. There, there are some down here too. Well, you can't see that. Um, but this, this is a plant that you can propagate that way. You can also, I'm trying to see if one of these, aha. So this leaf fell off of the plant and I didn't do anything. This was just in the bottom of the pot and you can see it's rooted. Uh, getting back, there it is. You can see the little pink roots. This is now ready to plant and I will plant this and it will make another, another plant. So um, I also wanted to show you 
this is something that I like to do. I like to make little mini gardens and there's a little mini garden. These were actually um, wedding favors that a friend used. And you can just take little clippings off of your succulents and these are all rooted and they're happy and eventually they will be too big for these little inch and a half pots. You can see they're teensy and uh, um, they'll have to be up potted. So this is uh, agave regina and it's variegated and there are three growing in this pot and I had hoped to take it apart and show you how to separate it but because I'm on my son's desk at his house, I, I'm not going to, whoops, I just lost you. I'm not gonna be able to do that, but I, I just want you to know that at this point with this plant, I would divide these babies and give them each their own four inch pot. Um, and Remember I was talking to you about overwatering and what happens when you overwater. So look at this sad thing. This is an edge of area and it's such a pretty little plant. It's really lovely, but it's got this whole rotten piece. And so what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to put this over my I'm just going to pull out the whole rotten part of it and then I'm going to take this whole thing out of this pot and put it in new soil and and I hope it will be okay but it looks like this piece over here has also started to rot so I need to once rot sets in you need to uh, get get it separated um, this is another of my favorite plants it's a woolly senesio and I like it because again, it's white and it's fuzzy. And these things we, we propagated, but this is one of those plants that you have to be super, super patient. Um, this is rooted, but it probably was started at least six months ago and it just doesn't do anything. And it doesn't do anything and it doesn't do anything. You need to be patient. This was cut and then it's, finally, finally took root. And this will grow into a fairly large plant. It's, they're really nice plants. Uh, woolly senesio. So this plant is another favorite plant. This is an Aeonium leucoblephrum. And let me see where my shoes are. So this plant I want to use to propagate and it's got all of these pieces on it. And what you can do with a plant like this, I'm gonna move back a little bit, so, um, is you can just take your shears off, shears, cutting uh, tools for your succulents. You need to clean them. Um, heaven forbid, I had cut something that was sick with these and then I come and cut this beautiful plant. So you can use any kind of, any of the disinfectants that we are all inundated with right now, but be sure that you clean your cutters and also keep them sharp. So, you know, they're not that expensive. You can buy some new ones, but this plant, so what I would do, sorry, is I would just cut that off and if your stem is juicy, this is a semi-juicy, it's not real juicy, but you just leave it out for a couple of days and let it harden, let it scar over. And I would probably take off a couple of these other leaves like this. And then um, once it's set for a day, you can just stick it in your soil, just like that. And then here's the key, do not water it. What do you need for the plant to absorb water? Somebody in there is saying roots, I hope. But 
Anyway, you need to have roots in order to be able to absorb the water. So it really can't do much until it gets some roots because it's gonna be scarred over. It's not like when you cut flowers and you put them in water. Um, so we usually leave our plants for about two weeks and we put them in what we call the splash zone so that you just barely get them damp. You don't want it to be dry as a bone, but you don't want to water them until they start getting roots. Um, what will happen if you water them and they don't have roots is they will often rot rather than getting roots. But this plant, um, you could just, you know, keep trimming off pieces and make a bunch of other plants with it. Whoops, I'm falling off my chair. Um, so there you go. There's the Luca Black Rum. Um, I am wondering, Liz, if there are any questions that I need to answer for you. Um, yeah, Judy. Um, one person asked about using bonsai jack mix for succulents. Have you heard of that? I wasn't familiar with it. I've never heard of it. I, I don't know. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And someone else um, uses grow lights and wants to know how far above the plant Oh, sorry, below, wait, yeah, how far above the lights would be from the plant? And I don't use grow lights, so I don't know that one. I don't use grow lights either, um, but I would say that you don't want to cook the plant. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I, would, I would make sure that you put the grow lights, you know, high enough that the plants are getting some light, but they're not going to get burnt by them. Um, yeah. And I bet if you Google it, I think that that information might be available yeah. also. I just saw too, somebody asked a question about starting things from leaves and uh, only getting roots. And that's just fine. Just plant that little leaf with the roots and you will get a new plant, I promise. Money back guaranteed. And, and someone asked about deer proof succulents. Oh. That's a hard one. Um, yeah. So what I have found, and I have a lot of deer around my house, is that um, a way to think of it, and I didn't talk about this too much, is where the plants come from. And if they are from Africa, then they're not usually on the deer's diet. And <laughs> the deer, I have found that the deer pretty much leave my succulents alone, except that like when my jade plant is blooming, the deer come and eat all the flowers off the jade plant, but they don't eat the jade plant. Um, I have lots and lots of succulents outside where the deer are, and I have cacti where the deer are, and they pretty much leave them alone. Although again, I would say, you know, if deer are hungry enough, they'll eat anything. Um, I have a maple tree, which supposedly deer don't eat. And every time they walk by my maple tree, they have to reaffirm that they don't eat maple trees. Um, <laughs> what I have been more bothered by in our area are sometimes the squirrels will eat um, some of my succulents. I think they're just doing it to be mean to me, but um, there are little critters that eat my succulents. The deer have not been a big problem for me. Um, I, I can't think of any succulents that I've had uh, deer eat, except for the flowers on my jade plants. And someone else did uh, mention the how to keep squirrels and birds off of their succulents. <laughs> <laughs> cage, cage them, one or the other, the squirrel yeah. or the plant. You know, um, we are lucky that we live in an area that has so much life and <laughs> wildlife. And um, unfortunately, what goes with that territory are our European roof rats that we have and squirrels. And uh, I had a, a Kalinkoe copper spoon that I was redoing my deck and it got put under my house and a rat, I think, ate the whole plant. I mean, it just ate everything. And they aren't supposed to eat those. Nobody's supposed to eat that. Um, it is growing back. But um, 
what I can say is I haven't had them do tremendous damage to anything. They ate the top of an echeveria off and um, <laughs> left it and it's growing back. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. that's, how do you keep them from eating your tomatoes or your strawberries or anything else? I, I think it's pretty much the same situation that you need to, um, as Liz said, either cage the cage the critters or cage the plants. So, do we have other questions? Sorry, someone mentioned that uh, rats ate their um, succulent. <laughs> oh, my husband is sneezing in the background. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I wondered what that was. Bless you, bless you. I can't mute it. Because, anyway, so, no, um, no, it's okay. It's, Someone asked for a string of pearls care. How do you care for them? Ah, so string of pearls are absolutely one of my favorite succulents. Um, they're just beautiful. You, you saw my string of pearls in the picture and we also have, we sell string of pearls at the poop house. Some of the things that you need to know about them is they take more water than other succulents do. So you want to make good use of your magic tool. And uh, where some of your other succulents won't need a drink, your string of pearls may. Um, another thing is they do not like to be in bright sun. They are actually a plant that you can grow inside. They like bright light. Um, but not full sun, they'll get sunburned and they'll dry out. Uh, yeah, they're, they're a little fussier than some of the other succulents. They're not the easiest one to grow, but um, once they seem like, once they get really established, they do really well, but make sure that you give them a little more water than, uh, than you would your other uh, plants, your other succulents. So just, Magic tool, folks, best thing you can use. Don't be shy. Just poke your finger in that plant and see how much water it needs because um, they actually need more. So can I talk about how to handle some of the jelly beans? Oh, are the Stapalia and African succulents difficult to grow? No, um, they're not difficult to grow. I'll talk about jelly beans in a minute. Um, Stapelia are actually very easy to grow and, and we are in the process of starting a whole bunch of them in the poop house and I hope they do well. What they are seem to me to be difficult to do is to get them to bloom. I have not yet discovered what the secret is. Mine bloomed for the first time this year and a friend of mine who had one as well, uh, hers bloomed at the same exact time. So maybe it was something to do with our conditions this year, but um, they're not a hard plant to grow. They also do not like full sun, but they like some sun. So um, there's good. Is string of turtles a succulent? Um, no, string of turtles is actually a house plant. I don't believe it's a succulent. I like it. And I'm sort of seeing your questions as they pop up, but not, I'm not seeing your whole uh, chat. Let me see if I can pull up the Judy? chat so I can see it. Yeah. yeah um, a couple of people mentioned about amending clay soil to gr grow succulents. I'm assuming, yeah, they're talking about amending their soil from their yards. Do um, you want to comment? I mean, I could, but you, you go ahead. Um, I, well, I wouldn't recommend clay soil. I mean, yeah, what I, what I would say is if you have real clay soil, um, you want to build berms or mounds over it. Keep in mind that um, most succulents do not have really deep roots. They have pretty shallow roots. So if you build up a hill or a berm and you uh, plant your succulents on that, they, they should be happy. So... And, and other than that, yeah, adding, um, oh, my brain went dead, yep, so lava, lava rock or Oh yeah, if you, can, if you can dig into the, uh, if you can dig into your clay, clay soil, you can put lava rock in it, in it and 
it should it should be okay. And somebody asked for ru about rust on epiphyllums. I have never had rust on my epiphyllums. Nor nor have I. So but I did. What I, I would what I would suggest as far as that goes is epiphyllums. You know they're they're pretty strong plants. And if I had rust on a leaf on my epiphyllum, I would just cut that leaf off. In the plastic bag, uh, I, throw it in the garbage, and your plant should be fine. It will regenerate. I mean, my epiphyllums just. They, they're so happy here. They grow like crazy. Everybody should have an epiphyllum. Everybody, if you don't have an epiphyllum, get an epiphyllum. They're amazing yeah. plants and they make beautiful flowers. So can you name some indoor succulents? I would think the, the low water, I mean, low light ones. Some of the very best ones are um, the Hawarthias, the, yeah. uh, the attenuatas, the ones that you see in the dentist's office and it looks like it's plastic and you have to touch it to see if it's real. And even after you touch it, you're not really sure. Um, the name of them is out of my head at the moment, but those are, those are great. And um, like I said, this, the mother-in-law's tongues are great. A, a lot of the lower light ones, the, the string of pearls, the string of watermelons, um, they'll grow indoors. Um, all the Haworthias will grow indoors, and a lot of the Senecios, which are now starting more and more to be called Curios, but a lot of them will grow indoors. What you can also do is you can rotate your plants. So bring a plant in the house for a while um, and then take it outside in the sun. I see somebody saying, can you plant succulents beside roses? And I would say no, because um, the roses need a lot more water than the succulents and the roses want a lot more nitrogen and fertilizer than the succulents. Now that being said, it's the old ham story. Um, the, the correct answer is no, but if it works for you, you can do it. Um, I never have grown, actually an, another part of that is roses don't like anybody else. Roses like to just be on their own and be roses. So if you're growing roses, um, I, I really wouldn't put um, succulents with my roses. Um, somebody asked about growing jelly beans, the Cita rubra tinctums or the auroras. Jelly beans are so fun and they're so pretty and they're so easy to grow. Um, whoever asked that question, can you elaborate? Um, there, Judy, they, that was yeah. me actually. I always have trouble with the ones like jelly beans or donkey tail. Whenever I touch it, it seems like all the little nubbins fall off. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that is, see, it's trying to make babies for you, Louise. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's, that's one of the ways that they propagate themselves is that they scatter those leaves and those leaves make new babies. So the real answer is don't touch them. <laughs> that's right. They do not disturb. <laughs> do not disturb. Uh, and, you know, they survive that to losing pieces, but yeah, they are very, very tender to being touched, but they grow. If, if we ever get the garden open again, you will not believe how well they're growing in the ground in our new garden. It's just amazing to me. They're doing wonderful. Um, somebody, uh, Kieran was asking about growing zygocactus to produce abundant flowers. And I think that the answer to that is um, everybody wants to put them in bigger pots. And, and I may be wrong about this. I'm not an expert on zygocactus, but my experience has been that they, they want to be kind of tight in their pot before they make a bunch of flowers. Uh, have you noticed that, Liz? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that they, so, they want to be more pot bound. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, those like, People have them that were their grandmothers. And Liz just gifted me one that was what, like 40 years old, the one that you gave me, Liz, the big one? I, yeah, it could be. Yeah. It and, was and it's yes. covered with blossoms. And 
it's getting ready to just go crazy. Whereas the smaller ones that I started more recently um, don't have as many flowers. So I think the answer is let it grow for a long time and don't put it in too big of pots. Um, let's see, it looks like there are a bunch of new messages and I'm not keeping up. Well, let's see. Why do succulent leaves get lots of tiny black spots? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't had that experience. Um, I'm Nor sorry. have I. Uh, Rosalie, are you sure they don't have aphids? That's... <laughs> yeah, are they moving the spots? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. She, that would be fine. She could email me a pic. That would be great. Um, Loretta asked how long it takes to propagate from leaves. And um, the answer to that is it depends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> again, you just need to be patient. Um, we do trays of leaves and sometimes it takes months. Um, and you just need to be patient. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it's like I showed you that little one. I don't know where it got to now. The little, oh, here it is. This guy. I mean, this was just in the bottom of the pot. I don't know when it started. And you know, it's and then there was also the one in this uh Gaptopetalum superbum. Where'd it go? This this guy just fell off and he was in the bottom of his pot. So I don't know if these were in there for two months or six months. I, I don't know. Usually I would say offhand, um, they usually start getting roots in about a month. So, ah, I love it. Dax said, you have to ignore the leaves. They can sense your urgency and become drama queens. I think that's cool. Ah, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, so let's see. Oh, do epiphyllums, do they wanna be um, more crowded too? I think so, yes. I, I thought so. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, Pants. so uh, Dax oh. was asking the Haworthia zebra plant, is it even alive? It absolutely is. <laughs> it absolutely is alive and you can't ignore it, but you do need to water it occasionally. Um, they're great plants. I, I love them. I mean, they're, and I have some that have lasted a long, 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 long time. And I don't know about propagating string of turtles from their leaves um, because as I said, they're not a succulent. So yes. I don't, I don't. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, someone asked about uh, diatomaceous earth. I think it was in reference to mealies, but I've used it for ants. I haven't, do you, I, I don't know if this person was asking if to use it for mealy bugs. Um, yeah. I, in general, in general, you would use it if, if you have any insect pest that the ants are farming. Right, the ants because you're, farm, you're just, and yeah, you're we discouraging. Had, uh, yeah, discouraging the ants. We like to discourage ants, but yeah. we had some cottony cushion scale get on some of our plants last year, which is just shocking to me. I mean, years and years and years of having succulents and I've never had cottony cushion scale, but um, the ants were there. And yeah, so the main thing, it's like when you have any plant and you have aphids you need to look for where are the ants you need to control the ants so yes and someone i don't know that we've addressed the cold weather um someone was i think from michigan um oh. we're kind of spoiled here but other than bringing them in and then using grow lights which i'm totally unfamiliar with and then taking them out during the nice weather that's all i can think of to offer other yeah, than googling a, it yeah. a lot of um i'm really surprised in the succulent groups i'm part of online that there are a lot of people who grow succulents in different parts of the country and yeah i mean they aren't going to take that below freezing weather so they need to be you need to be able to bring them inside and protect them from the frost except some do grow outdoors i grew up in michigan and i'm hemp Hens and chicks yeah. were popular. Semper, in Semper vivum, Semper vivum, yes. which are sometimes called hens and chicks. Hens and chicks, there are about a thousand plants that they call hens and chicks, like right. Dusty Miller. There's a thousand plants that they call Dusty Miller. 
But that's one of the things that when you do know um, where your plant is from, that can help you know what kind of weather it, it needs. And some of them, like Sempervivums, come from high, high up in the mountains. Um, Emily's asking, should she bring her succulents in when we get long bouts of rain? Yes. Yes, you should either cover them or, you know, put them out of the rain. They will rot if they're over, over, uh, over watered. Um, your zebra haworthia is stretching because it wants more light. You can grow epiphyllum in the yard, but it seems to do better in pots. Um, it, but it can grow in the yard. One of the things that happens if you grow it in the yard is you know the, the leaves drape down. And if you grow it in the yard, you're gonna end up with all those leaves kind of um, stacking up on each other. Um, but you can, I mean, certainly plants weren't, didn't happen in pots ever, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Someone asked, um, I don't know that you address it. I've been following too many conversations here. When propagating from leaf, do you water them? Well, no, did you tell people that we don't water them. Uh, right. Somebody said, I saw that somebody said, if you don't water them, they'll dry out. Um, we don't There's water kind of, ours. We, yeah, it's a kind know, of a, yeah, it's a fine line. You yeah. might, well, we missed them. <laughs> you might missed the soil to keep it a little bit damp, but actually, you know, before I became a master gardener, I was already a succulent person and I had lots and lots of succulents out on my porch. And every once in a while, I would move all my pots out and sweep the porch, and they would be on the flags, on the flagstones would be all of these leaf starts that, you know, they just had started lying on the concrete. So, um, right. you know, you don't want to overwater them. Uh, I'd be more afraid of them rotting. Um, but that being said, if it works for you, <laughs> It works. Um, as far as stringing lights, um, we're getting into a situation that's really frustrating in that you can only buy LED lights now. And LED lights do not give off heat. So you want to look for the old fashioned uh, lights if you want to use lights around your plants to keep them warm. Um, yeah, misting your cuttings is fine. Misting them works well. I, I agree, Kyle. Um, so the city that we're in, um, our, our hoop house is in Marshall Cottle Park, which is in San Jose. Um, and because of COVID, we aren't able to have sales right now, but hopefully everybody's getting their vaccination and we'll eventually be able to open everything up. But we have done online sales, but um, that was kind of restricted to master gardeners, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. But so if you know a master that, gardener. <laughs> yeah, and this is something else that's really helpful to me and to us is we want to grow what you want to have. So if you join our MG Sassy Succulents page on Facebook and tell me what you want, I'll try to grow it. Um, that's, that's my, oh, thank you, Louise, for posting that. Um, that's what we like to do. We want to grow what you want to buy. That's why we started growing tons and tons of strings of pearls um, because everybody seems to like those and want them. And they're expensive to buy. Yes. I mean, in the stores. I mean, in the stores. Haha, <laughs> Dax wants to buy some cannabis. I don't think that's a succulent, <laughs> but they do sell that here in San Jose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are some spots. How do they get the recording? Don't they go to the Master Gardener uh, YouTube channel for, or is that for the recording of this? Yeah, it'll be oh, posted. Okay. okay. Yes, if people are looking at the chat, yes, the recording will be paid, posted on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Master Gardeners, in a, in a few days, within a few days. Yeah, and I think I think um, that. If you were registered for this uh, class, you'll automatically get a link to it. Is that yes, not correct? Yes, I think. I think yeah, everybody's. I think so. Oh, Harriet, I, we have string of watermelons. <laughs> we do have string of watermelons. Join the page and 
ask me about it. But um, uh, if you last, if you join our page and uh, you you should have gotten in your handouts the list of summer winter growing succulents. Eschaveria rainbow. I'm not familiar with that one. Nor am I. Sounds I'm nice. Either. Yeah. And the string of hearts um, we don't have right now. I really like those. Um, I'm glad that you want some and I will do my best to start growing some. Um, everybody has plants that they do well with and some plants that they don't do so well with. I've always had a little challenge with string of hearts. Um, they and other people don't. The other thing, if you are growing um, living rocks, my hat is off to you. They are my um, nemesis, and I I belong to the succulent page. Or I mean, I belong to the Facebook page that is all about them, and I drool over other people's. And um, yep, it's just not something I can grow. So everybody has things. Someone asked for a list of succulents that we grow on the Master Gardener's website. Um, there is a list of uh, what we have grown for our plant sale. So go to the Master Gardeners well, or Santa Clara County. Yeah, that's that's great. And if you look at the sunshade list, I actually took that directly from our inventory list because I was trying to find something that was easy to find how much sun things liked. And we had that in our list. So oh. I used our list. So most great, of the great. things that are on that list, we are growing. But again, I, I really hope that you will like our Facebook page and bug me. You can email me. You can ask questions on our Facebook page. Um, I like to be nudged. Thanks, Mildy. And, um, you know, I'm happy. I, I'm a, a people people person and I like to make people happy. So I want to make you happy. Um, I Someone don't else? know if we have any Echeveria spectabilis at this point. But I again, don't think so. If you ask me, I will try. And I don't know on the ID apps, they were all suggested by our listeners today. And I don't know which is the easiest. What's the easiest for you? Go try them all. Now, I have had zero luck with ID apps. I, I do not have, there is not a single ID app that I can recommend to you. I'm sorry to say that. I've tried a lot of them. Um, what I find is to just really gut out your homework. So, yep, you know, yep. just start looking. Ask your friends. <laughs> it looks um, like it's getting to be 8.30 now. And I think we're going to have to start wrapping things up. Well, thank you for this opportunity. I, I wish I could see everybody's faces and thank them for coming. Um, I hope you had fun and... Uh, yeah, Mona, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, and I look, yay, thank you. Can you turn your cameras on for a minute and let me see you guys? Say hi. <laughs> yay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so hard Woo! when you're giving a presentation and you can't see anybody. Oh, this and, is much uh, better. I, I love can't it. Tell if you guys are liking it or hating it, like if in a live presentation, I can see somebody's falling asleep or whatever. Um, oh, I really appreciate you all being here. Thank this you so great. much. Yeah, thank you all.